Well, hello, everybody. It's Heath Robinson with Topaz Labs. Always excited to be presenting again with uh, this time we've got Greg Rastami. Uh, many of you may have run into Greg at trade shows. He represents Topaz Labs at a lot of our trade shows around the world, actually. Uh, he started working with Topaz Labs over 10 years ago as a product evangelist. An avid close-up musician, he combined his love of technology and magic to create Rostami Magic, which has become one of the most popular magic apps for iOS and Android. Uh, he's also developed several technologies for film restoration, 3D visual effects, and other visual pipelines that spawned a new generation of post-production services. Uh, Greg partnered with Topaz years ago over a shared love of powerful visual arts technology and tools that empower users to create their art their way. Holly. Hello, everybody. It is really a pleasure to be presenting uh, both the new Topaz AI Remix and the new AI Clear. Uh, both of these products uh, really showcase how unbelievably powerful the latest trend in deep learning is. And uh, what I'm going to do today is uh, essentially start out with some of the artistic applications with AI Remix and how you can use AI Remix in really artistic, clever ways and mix it with some of the different Topaz technologies um, for some pretty revolutionary kind of results. Now, as uh, Heath just told you, I started out as a visual effects artist. And so in visual effects, we're always looking for the new aesthetic. So hopefully these tools are going to show you the path in how you're going to find your new aesthetic and to really um, set some new ground for uh, the new look that's going to be your unique look. So let's start out with this leopard photo right here. And uh, immediately, uh, since we're inside of Topaz Studio, let's pull down to AI Remix. And uh, the latest version of AI Remix, because it's so unbelievably fast uh, because of the optimizations, the moment you click on a preset, poof, suddenly a preset pops up. So right now, I'm using the Neon Feathers preset. And uh, under the style strength, you can see that you can choose either a low, medium, and every time I switch to any of these other settings, I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer so you can see how it affects the final image. So as you go up in the style strength, the speed of the program is going to go down just a little bit. But once again, because of the latest advancements of AI Remix, it is unbelievably fast when it goes from one to the other. OK, so I like this particular style that I just applied to the leopard, but we're going to do something kind of unique to this leopard. In, um, Let's first take a look at just the color. I'm going to completely shut out the color. So it gives you this really beautiful kind of a sketch look that's there. And let's also give it some uh, brightness and contrast. So it's going to give us a lot more pop in this sketch. And then finally, the last thing that I want to do with um, this sketch is use the power of actually Topaz impression to make it look like somebody is actually taking, you know, brush strokes or pencil strokes uh, across a canvas to create it. Now, I can already see that there are some lines that are here uh, across the nose or the mouth. And one of my favorite features in AI Remix is how you can play with the smoothing of the edges. And then watch what happens when I keep bringing up those smooth edges. It tends to want to round off these edges. And in this particular example, I want to create a much rougher kind of a sketch. And that's why I'm going to bring those smooth edges down and suppress artifacts. Uh, that slider is great for taking sometimes these little curly cues that the AI might be drawing or rendering in your images, and it loves to suppress those kinds of things. So once you're satisfied with this general sketch look, under the lower right-hand corner of every adjustment in Topaz, there is this Enhance button. And we're going to now enhance Topaz AI Remix with Impression. OK, so once impression has been added in, now impression essentially is being applied on the top of what AI Remix was already doing. We're going to grab a brush that's going to be a little bit more swirly, which is this one right here. Um, we're going to use for the number of strokes high. And so this is going to allow a lot of strokes to be taken across the canvas. For the paint opacity for this one, I'm going to crank it up all the way. But I just want to show you some of the variations that will take place as we start playing around with it. Also for spill, we want the spill to be all the way up here too. So now you're noticing that as you start playing around with this, especially when you start playing with brush size, okay, how the brush strokes that are being applied are right now as I manipulate brush size are getting bigger or smaller. 
which is really, really neat. And it's helping take this um, uh, somewhat more simple or I should say solidly colored kind of sketch. And it really tends to want to break it up, you know. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit more of a brush size. Let's make that just a little bit smaller. And I'm pretty happy with it. Let's actually zoom out and see what we got. All right, that looks good. <laughs> All right. Uh, I want to do one more thing as far as like playing with the, the general contrast of this. And just under the brightness and contrast, if I boost up the contrast and I bring down the brightness a bit, we're going to get some more details. And then last but not least, I want the leopard to be the center of this drawing. I want the center of the attention to be right on the leopard. And that's why if we go all the way to the top and choose a vignette, I want this vignette to be instead of black, let's choose white. All right. And Let's bring up the vignette strength. And so now you're going to notice as I play it with this vin vignette strength, how the vignette starts coming in right away. Um, just to exaggerate this effect, I'm going to play with the size so you can really, really see what's happening with the vignette. But in a moment, we'll dial that down. Let's also center the vignette right on the leopard's face. There we go. That looks great. And so now, now that I've centered it the way I like it, I can take some of the perimeter and just slowly bring that back. So it looks like the artist that was doing the sketch was essentially fading out their drawing as they got closer to the perimeter of the canvas. All right. So that's the first example of how we can really play with AI Remix and mix it up with some of the other uh, tools that are in Topaz. But uh, to show you some of the more interesting things that we could do that could be color related, I love this photo of the dog. And it is uh, what Heath selected to be like the mascot for this AI magic um, webinar. Let's jump back into AI Remix. And let me grab the uh, preset that I had used for the dog. And if I remember correctly, I had used this uh, really pretty blue and yellow one uh, that I've been playing with before. Let's see if I can find that here for you. And if not, I'll just grab any one of them that we've already got. Let's see how, how this one's going to look. Now, as a, as a tool for experimentation, what, what I highly recommend is when you are looking for the proper color theme for your final painting or your point for your final image, start out with the style strength actually on low. And what's great about using low is that it will allow you to just instantly click on a preset and quickly see what that image is going to look like with that preset. And once you find uh, what you're looking for, once you find a style that catches your eye, then that's when you should switch over to doing the higher uh, style strength. So let me just go back to uh, the previous one that I had, which was this one right here. There we go. Let's try to do the high one. OK, so now you're going to see it's the AI is definitely working a lot harder to generate this final image. And just exactly the same way as previously, we used our um, Topaz impression to work along with what we were doing with um, AI Remix. I'm going to do the same thing here. So let's just simply add a Topaz impression to the bottom of this workflow. OK, there we are. Uh, one other thing that I want to do is, as we go back into AI Remix, let's take some of these little curly cues or swirly patterns that are happening and try to suppress those just a little bit, because I want to see more of just the color theme of the dog and less of these swirls. And the way you do that is, as you come down AI Remix, where it says Smooth Edges, let's bring up the edges just a little bit more. Um, if you ever zoom in on uh, anything that AI Remix does, and you notice that there is some aliasing going on, uh, it's really easy to uh, reduce or completely eliminate the aliasing just by using your sharpness slider. So as I bring that sharpness slider down, I'm going to get to the point where that aliasing completely disappears and you get a very organic looking painting. And then finally, suppress artifacts as we bring that up. It's going to try to bring down any of these little swirlies that we've got as much as possible. And then finally, the last thing we're going to throw in is going to be our uh, impression. Okay, let's go back to our impression that we had just introduced. There we go. We're going to do uh, a high number of brush strokes. So it's going to, the AI, pardon me, impression is going to take a lot of brush strokes here on the campus, canvas. Brush size. I want to get a lot of paint volume out of this just because I want to actually see all of these 
paint strokes that are being applied and also the paint opacity. So we can actually see the individual brush strokes like really, really being applied. Um, one of my favorite features in impression is the spill slider. If you bring the spill all the way up, you're gonna notice how every brush stroke is going to spill past the edges that are natural to the image. Okay, I like bringing spill all the way up because it always tends to produce a more of a natural kind of painting. But, you know, as you play with it, just kind of like tune it in until you get it the way you like. And I usually have it more towards the right side of that spill slider than towards the left because I like having more of an abstract kind of a painting look where the, the brush strokes are truly spilling out of the edges. Okay, now keep in mind, if I was to show you the before version of this photo, Okay, it's pretty amazing where we were just a few seconds ago and where we are now. So let's finish this off with, as we zoom in a little bit further, uh, by applying just a tad of texture to the final painting. And uh, for those of you who have used impression before, you know how texture strength is here. So I'm gonna try a little bit of asphalt and bring that up. Texture strength, texture size, and. So now I should start seeing more and more of the original texture come on coming in. And if the asphalt isn't strong enough, let's try uh, something even stronger than that. Let's try this canvas one. There we go, canvas is pretty cool. So now I have a really, really rough texture that's being applied as well. So once again, this is where we were a few seconds ago, and this is where we are now, and this is the endless amount of fun that's there when you start playing around with AI Remix. So uh, one of the things that I was talking about as far as um, finding your particular look is when you start with AI Remix, I highly recommend that you start exploring what are the different kinds of styles that the um, different uh, presets have. And to highlight what I mean by that, uh, let's take uh, one of these examples that I had done from before. Okay, let me completely reset this one and turn on AI Remix. There we go. So there's gonna be styles that you're gonna notice that are unbelievably abstract. You know, I'll just show you a few of the abstract ones. In fact, the new AI Remix has broken everything down into categories. So it's easy for you to jump into, let's say the abstract category and click on one of these crazy abstract ones. And sure enough, <laughs> that is, pretty abstract, you know? But once again, this is an important way for you to experiment because it's so amazing to be able to start out with just a simple photograph and see what the artificial intelligence that has been trained with all of these different painting styles is going to render for your photo. So um, familiarizing yourself with these different styles is really, really important in allowing you to get exactly what you want when it comes time for you to take one of your photos and manipulate it, okay? So uh, in contrast to being so amazingly abstract, let's now go to the opposite side of the spectrum and try things that are gonna be a lot more natural. So let's say, for example, something like Autumn Dreams, okay? Once the computer is done processing Autumn Dreams, you can see that now in comparison to the original photograph, it's not so crazy. <laughs> you know, it's a lot more like a traditional photo would be. And I think that's really speaks volumes about the power of AI Remix is that you can either do things that are over the top or you can do things that are a lot more subdued. And because of this ability of just blending in an effect exactly to the right level that you want is how you're going to get the final results that you want. So let's start off with something actually just on this flower the way that it is right now. So I like the way that this looks. I like the color theme that we have. And let's do something as simple as just choosing for the blend type color. Okay. So you notice that just by doing something as simple as changing the color has take, totally taken our original photo and it has recolored it now with this new effect, with this new preset, right? And you can do that again and again. So now every time I click on any of these other presets. And now, instead of the preset completely overtaking your image, it's now acting like a way for you to recolor your photo. So you could actually think of AI Remix as a playground of exploring the color themes that are in your photos too. But we're gonna take this to another level. We're gonna really, really push it to its ultimate level. 
And let's go back to our uh, original outline that we had, normal, there we go. And I'm gonna introduce you to a wonderful feature in Topaz, which is under the hamburger menu for every one of the adjustments. And that option is called use original image as input. Okay, now you're gonna notice that I'm gonna turn that on um, <clears throat> in just a moment when we apply another copy of AI Remix. So now remember there's two uses of AI Remix, one after the other, and for the second one, because keep in mind that everything in studio happens from the top to the bottom. So first the image goes through the first AI Remix, and then it's gonna come to the second one. But for the second one, we're gonna use that hamburger option of use original image as input. Now, for this second um, adjustment with AI Remix, I'm going to choose this to be just first of all on normal, but we're going to do an outline. So under abstract, uh, actually, pardon me, it's right here under high impact, uh, baby blues. I love all the lines that baby blues generates. And so you can see that it kind of looks like um, a quick sketch with ink that has been done of the flowers but I'm gonna completely turn off the color by reducing the saturation down to zero. And let's play with the brightness and the contrast. Let's get the brightness really, really high here. There we go. Okay, perfect. So I like this quick ink sketch that we have now of the original drawing. What I don't like is some of these extra lines that uh, the AI is fi finding as a part of the background or even on the table that the vase is resting on. The way you remove these extra lines is by using the enhance option, but that's you know, typical of every adjustment, and we're gonna use a color overlay. So what we essentially wanna do is we wanna paint in white, so you can see that the default color is white. We'll bring the opacity all the way up so we're gonna be painting with white. And since we need to paint, we need to use the mask for the color overlay. I always start off by inverting the mask. So now I'm gonna be painting actually with the brush, with a white brush. Now watch what happens when we grab a big brush with almost no softness and we just simply start to paint. So now you're noticing that this is a great way for me to just get rid of some of this extra gobbledygook <laughs> that we don't need, you know? So just painting some of these out. Oh yeah. Okay, and then uh, in a moment, I'm gonna switch over to a smaller brush just to keep take care of the, some of the smaller little nooks and crannies that I couldn't get to before. So this shouldn't take you any time at all. Like uh, I'm usually doing these little paints here and it takes me uh, less than a couple of minutes to get it all done. And when I'm doing this, usually I will even toggle the original image back and forth. And this is helpful for me to be able to see if what I'm painting out is either a part of the original uh, subject that I want or if it's part of the background. So I know some of these lines are just simply a part of uh, the background that we don't want. And I am done. <laughs> All right, I like it. Okay, so once we're happy with this result, what we've gotten now is just this outline, right? Let's now show you how by using that mixture of two AI remixes is gonna work so well together. On the second one, instead of being on normal, simply change this to multiply. Look at how cool that is. So now essentially we are almost looking at images or the things that we artistically play with in AI Remix, both as an outline, almost like edge detection would be, or sometimes you might think of it as like luminance or chrominance, whereas there's a part of AI Remix which is dealing with the edges that are in your image. And there's another part of it, in fact, I'll turn those on and off for you just so you can see what we're talking about. So the second AI Remix is purely handling the edges, okay, which looks great, which is just what we made right now. And then, the first part of it, I turned that off, is just dealing with colors. Now, the reason why I love this workflow is because it gives me this endless kind of canvas of creativity. So let's say I go back to multiply and I wanna play with a different color theme altogether. All I have to do is switch to something different. So let's say I switch to uh, the autumn tone. Look what's gonna happen now. So now the lines are still there, but the color now in the background is completely changed. So this separation is really, really fun. 
and it allows you to really quickly jump through um, just exploring everything that you can do with an image. All right, so uh, the last example that I'm going to show you here with um, AI Remix is going to be with a portrait. Okay, uh, now she's really, really beautiful, and we just want to do something that's going to artistically highlight her or make this portrait a little bit more exciting. And the way we're going to do that is jump into AI Remix. And one of the latest presets that was just added is this uh, Violet Night, which is really cool. You know, it looks like it puts these stars or constellations all over your image. I'm going to switch that over to high. And uh, again, I can see that this isn't really attractive to her face or anything else. So to tweak this, to get it exactly the way that we want, let's switch this over to screen. So now it's going to be adding to the image. And notice that just by simply switching the screen, how it's made the effect so much more appealing. Now, obviously, we don't like the little dots all over her face. And that's why it's so great in Topaz that you always have in studio uh, the add mask. So let's go ahead and add a mask and grab a brush. We'll make a nice uh, soft brush. Should be pretty good right about there. And uh, we don't even really need, need edge aware for this one. Just kind of like brush right in the here and see what we get. There we go. So we're just going to brush out the areas that we don't need. And there we are. Okay. So we took an image that was just kind of ho-hum. And we added all these little sparkles to her hair. And if I feel that these colors that are over here are a little too much, it's easy enough to be able to just jump in to the saturation slider here in uh, um, AI Remix and just bring that down. And we can tweak it in until we get it the way we like. OK, perfect. So that's how sometimes I like to use our AI Remix as a way of uh, just adding some flavor, you know, or some accent to your photos. So uh, I can see as the time has gone by, I want to be able to definitely dedicate even more time to the uh, AI Clear. But the last example that I'm going to show you is a, a cosplay photo. Uh, this is Lex Luthor. Hey, uh, Chris. Yes. We, we had yes. people asking a bit about the blend modes. Could you explain kind of, I, I know you're going to do it in this instance, or um, the difference between what the screen mode is doing, what the multiply mode is doing? Absolutely, yes. Thank you very much for the question. Okay, let me go back to the example that I was just using here a moment ago. Let me zoom in on that. All right. So first, uh, I'm going to turn off the first step here, just so that you're looking only at the original image. And I'm going to first just simply go to normal. Normal means the image comes in, and whatever this adjustment is doing is simply replacing that image. So if the adjustment was, let's say, inverting your image, it's just going to simply be an inversion, and that's it. right? Um, whereas in contrast, when we go to something like multiply, what multiply does is that now it's taking the image, and it's mathematically actually multiplying it to whatever was coming in on the previous step. Now, all of these blending modes are analogous to the blending modes that you will find in Photoshop. So for those of you who have used Photoshop and you have, have experience with blend modes, those, these are exactly the same that you have there. So with multiply, uh, what you're noticing is happening is that anything that's white, which is essentially a one, <laughs> you know, because white is like a, a number one and black is a zero, when you take one and you multiply it by anything, it just becomes itself. So if the background happened to be, in this case, like a blue, blue times one just ends up being blue. Whereas in contrast, any part of the image that is black, those blacks, when they get multiplied to the image, zero times anything is zero. So therefore, it darkens the image there. And that's exactly what's going on, is uh, the multiply option is what's creating this really lovely um, color outline that you see there. And the last example that I had was, of course, with um, our portrait. So let's take a look at that one more time as we zoom in. Um, in this particular case, I'm using screen. Screen is, once again, analogous to the Photoshop screen, which is an additive image, meaning that whatever AI Remix is creating is being added to your original image. Just to show you what the normal image looks like. Okay, so this is the normal image with nothing else applied. Okay, this is just straight up 
what AI Remix is doing to the image, okay? So you're noticing now it's replacing the image that's already there. Whereas in contrast, when I went into here and I chose screen, now that image is being added to the original image and I can choose opacity to blend that in and out. So you can see how I can kind of like make it be even more subtle. And that's essentially screen. So screen is additive, whereas the previous example was multiplicative. And every one of these different options gives you a different look. And uh, I love how in uh, Topaz Studio, it's easy for me just to hover my mouse on every one of them and see exactly how that's gonna affect my image. So I can you know, really experiment and find something that I love. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, that's fantastic, thank you. Yeah, sure, you're welcome. <laughs> All right, so for the last example, Lex Luthor. So this is a, a great cosplay photo and we're gonna do something artistic with it. Yeah, let's see here. People messaging on Facebook. Adjustments, AI Remix. And uh, I'm gonna grab one of my favorite ways of doing line art, which is ne neon feathers. And let's also choose high. And so immediately you can see how it gives you all these wonderful lines. And even though these color pal this color palette is really beautiful, and for this particular example, once again, I'm gonna turn off the colors completely. So no saturation on this one. Uh, let's play with the brightness and the contrast until we just, you know, home it in on exactly what we want. Okay, it's nice contrasty line art is really what we're looking for here. Okay, and as we zoom in, uh, I'm also gonna pay attention to any of the aliasing that might be happening there. So if you ever see the little jaggies, once again, make sure you just bring the sharpness down. It's gonna get rid of all the little jaggies that are there. And uh, we'll do a little suppress artifacts. It's gonna make the little swirls disappear as well. And I like it. Okay. Now, normally I would spend some time actually cleaning up some of the perimeter of it. I'll just do that for you really, really quickly, just to remind you of how that was done before. But normally I would spend a lot more time. And all you're going to do is, again, in the lower right hand corner, click on the enhance button. You're going to choose color overlay. By default, that color overlay is white, which is perfect for what we need. Crank up the opacity, and you're going to be painting a mask. And I always start out by inverting that mask so that I can actually, now anything that I brush in with a white, make sure you do choose white here, because now as you brush, you'll notice it's gonna be just brushing away the things you don't want. So a nice big radius, low sharpness, and I'll quickly just get rid of some of these things around the perimeter, but we won't spend too much time doing it, just because you guys already saw me do that with the previous example with the flowers. All right. Okay. That looks good. <laughs> All right. So once you're happy with these results, uh, let's uh, once again use this new trick that we just learned about mixing the results from uh, AI Clear with the results that come from other Topaz products by doing something like this. Yeah, let me actually uh, close this color overlay down. I'm happy with that. And I'm going to bring in this time. Let's see, something as crazy as, uh, hmm, let's try impression, okay? So watch, watch how cool this is going to be. Um, make sure that impression right now is going to be the first thing that's going to happen. All I'm doing right now is dragging it up. And also under AI Remix, I'm going to use that use original image as input. So what's happening when you use original image as input, it means that the input to AI Remix is no longer going to be coming from the previous step. It means it's, it's doing exactly what you've told it to do right now, is that it's using the original image, which is, of course, this image right here, as the input to AI Remix. So essentially, it's going around that impression right now. All right, let me turn that off for just a moment. And in this impression step, I want this really severely um, kind of like colorful, low brush strokes and very, very loud kind of a painting. And what I mean by loud is I'm gonna exaggerate every brush stroke, just make it as loud and as <laughs> vibrant as I can, you know? So let's get the colors and bring up the saturation a little bit like that. There we go, it's kind of cool. Right about there should be good. And the spill is up as well. So I got all these edges that are essentially shooting out all over the place. And I'll even bring up the overall lightness just a little bit. Okay, awesome. 
So this is now, the way that I look at this right now as I'm doing it is that so I, I look at this as the underlying color that's gonna be in my image. Because now, the moment that I turn this on and I switch this over to multiply, look what's gonna happen. Here's multiply right there, and boom. So now, those lines that we had just created from our AI remix step are being applied to this. And I can see that the, the paint now is just a little too much, you know, so it's a little too crazy. So if you do think that's just over the top crazy, then it's easy enough to be able to go back into Topaz Impression and bring that brush size down. There we go. So now the paint, if you were to zoom in, um, it's almost like the artist that was doing this, the paint was literally spilling out of the corners of the image, you know? So as if the artist had used ink to ink in the details, and then later on was using paint to really roughly paint in the character. So again, that's another great example of using AI Remix in really clever, interesting ways. So I'm now gonna completely transition out of things that are so over the top, artistic and fun, and we're gonna talk about AI Clear. Here we go. Okay, for those of you who have never seen me before, <laughs> this is what I look like. Right? Uh, this photograph was taken using my Canon 5D Mark II. <clears throat> I was holding the camera and my hands in front of my face, and I intentionally maxed out every function of my 5D Mark II. The, the shutter speed is currently at 1 4,000th of a second, which is the maximum shutter speed of a 5D Mark II, and the ISO is 25,600. Uh, for those of you who have had a Canon Mark II, you know that 25,600 is the maximum ISO, and hence, noise. Lots and lots of noise. So here is the real magic of AI Clear. So you're noticing that the only thing I'm gonna do right now is just turn on AI Clear. I'm not gonna do anything else. So the AI is analyzing, oh my gosh, it's already done. Okay, um, the new AI Clear is so fast that it's already finished doing what it's supposed to do. And let me give you a little side-by-side -side comparison over here. Okay, so uh, immediately, the, if you were to compare the left side, uh, I want you to look at the corner of my eye. It's filled with these greens and pinks and purple, just chrominance noise all over the place. Whereas on the right-hand side, AI Clear has gotten rid of all of it. So right now we're using the remove noise option on auto. I would say about 90, 95% of the time, the auto function does a remarkable job of just figuring out how much noise is in your image and applying the right amount of correction. But just for this example, I want to show you what happens if I switch over here to high. Okay, so you'll notice that the AI with the blue line that's moving across the top is now reanalyzing the image. It's actually going to be using a new neural network. Um, and now here's the final result. So uh, the other thing that I want to highlight for everyone is the very, very important slider down here that says recover details. Look what happens when I take that recover detail slider and I put it all the way to the right. You're noticing that now, even though on the left side we had the noise, on the right side, it's reintroducing some of the luminance noise and not so much the chrominance noise. And that's why if there were any details that AI Clear was removing from the photo, just by using that recover details slider, you're bringing those details back. But it just so happens that I don't need to take it up that much because what it has done by default it is really, really remarkable. And let me outline for you really what you're looking at. First of all, if you look right to the center of the pupil of my eye, the noise is so bad that I can't see the reflection of my arms holding the camera. Whereas on the right-hand side, I see that perfectly. I can see my arms stretched out in front of me, I'm holding the camera. As I was looking at my forehead, Okay, once again, on the left side, the noise is so bad that even the human eye can't really see the subtle wrinkles or the pores that are on my skin. Whereas on the right hand side, all the little wrinkles, all the details or the pores just perfectly comes through. And then finally, let's look at the background. Okay, because this is where I started really freaking out, mainly because uh, usually backgrounds that are out of focus, especially in really, really high ISOs, are just filled with these rainbow colors of greens and pinks and purples and everything. Whereas on the right-hand side, 
it looks like you shot this thing with an ISO of 50. It's <laughs> unbelievable. I mean, how many f-stops you're going to get just by using AI Clear. And of course, for those of you who are noticing my hair, you can see that how, again, all the chrominance noise is being removed. But one of the things that I want to really highlight here for you as we get in really close, we're going to actually look at um, some really, really subtle details. I'm going to zoom in quite a bit, okay? Let's get really, 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 really close. Okay, I want you to look over here at just this one little strand of hair. Okay, you're noticing how the noise has a tendency of eating away at details, how it's actually taking a straight line and it's converting it into just a dashed set of you know lines. Whereas the AI is smart enough to recognize that that's a continuous line and therefore it renders it as a continuous line. And that really speaks volumes about why AI is so smart when it comes to noise reduction because the artificial intelligence has learned from millions of photos and therefore it knows how to correctly remove noise from a photo. So now that we've shown you an example of something with such severe noise, you're probably wondering what would happen if we gave it a photo that was absolutely perfect, okay? Let's try this photo right here. I love this photograph, very dramatic, uh, the lava flowing, and I've used it in a previous webinar. And once again, take a look at how straightforward this is. All you do is just turn on AI Clear, okay? Um, now, before I jump into AI Clear, as, I, as we go into the before and after, there doesn't really seem to be anything wrong with the photo. There's really no noise in the photo. But the first thing you're gonna notice that is that all of the photos that you thought were sharp were actually not that sharp. After you put it through AI Clear, everything becomes tack sharp. Another side effect, which is great, of all the things that AI Clear just naturally wants to fix for you, is what happens if there is any chromatic aberration in your photos. And you all know that as you get closer and closer to the perimeter of a photo, the more and more chromatic aberration is going to be there. And chromatic aberration are these purples or blues that you see around the perimeter or the edges of shapes. Whereas on the right-hand side, the AI has completely eliminated any of the chromatic aberration because the AI is smart enough to recognize that it shouldn't be there. <laughs> so it just automatically removes it all by itself. So even though we had an image that we thought was perfectly good to start off with, AI Clear made it more clear and it removed any subtle artifacts that could have been in the image as well. Now, finally, uh, the last image I'm going to use is a portrait photo that went wrong. Let me zoom in on this one. Uh, in this particular photograph, you're noticing that the camera, instead of focusing on her face, is accidentally focusing on her hair. And that's the reason why her face is soft. And again, the magic of AI Clear. Just turn it on and let's see what happens. So the artificial intelligence is gonna recognize that. And so if I zoom in on this, let me give you a little split screen so you can see them side by side, okay? Immediately on the left side where we have the blurry eyes, the blurry teeth, the right side, the AI is now creating sharper eyes, sharper teeth. And because we now can tweak this in until we get it the way we like it, use recover details, I can make her more blurry if I wanted to, or I could actually go the other way. So if I wanna punch up the sharpness some more, I could. Or even using enhanced sharpness, if I switch that over to high. Okay, now in this particular case, uh, it makes just a little bit of a difference, uh, but in some of your other images, yeah, I can actually see the difference right now. The high is definitely sharper. I'm gonna keep it on low for this one, mainly because if I look now over here at her hair, okay, we wanna make sure that her hair is not gonna look like it's being over sharpened. And that's exactly what AI has done. Uh, essentially, it's you know removing the blur from the parts of the image that needed to have it fixed, and it's leaving the other parts just the, the way that they were. All right, so uh, I think that covers all of the examples that I had for AI Clear, I want to see if there's any others that I have. Uh, and then finally, uh, for those of you who are uh, customers of Topaz Denoise, okay, 
Uh, I love denoise, and, and there are um, several cases where denoise is preferred by photographers because you really want to go in there and take control of your images with denoise and tweak every variable to get exactly the right amount of noise reduction. Whereas in contrast, when you look at AI clear, AI clear is based on artificial intelligence, which means that it's just going to do what it's going to do, <laughs> right? Uh, and it's not going to give you as much intricate control um, as denoise would, but this should be a nice comparison for you just so you can see the original image. Here's Topaz denoise, which is really, really powerful. And then finally, our new AI clear uh, and the kind of noise reduction that you can get from both of these applications. In fact, uh, many times I will combine the applications together where I will have uh, Topaz denoise being used sometimes to deband my really high ISO images that suffer from banding noise. And then I'll use uh, AI Clear to finish off the denoise process. And now I'm going to hand it back over to Heath. Uh, guys, if you want to learn more about our products, you can always visit our website. That's topazlabs.com. Uh, we've got a page on AI Gigapixel. We've got stuff on AI Clear, AI Remix, plenty of examples on the Facebook page as well at facebook.com forward slash topazlabs. Uh, if you want to talk to other Topaz users, uh, Facebook isn't really good for ongoing conversations because it works in like a... Uh, uh, what do they call it, the feed stream, so it's like the newest stuff and the older stuff kind of gets filtered out. Uh, we have our own forums. That's discuss.topazlabs.com. You guys can sign up there with your Topaz account and uh, share images, discuss techniques and stuff with other users. Um, we've got a lot of information there and a lot of active people. And, guys, if you have any problems, you can always reach out on our help center. That's help.topazlabs.com. We've got system requirements, things, a ton of solutions to common issues that people run into uh, if you're – run the installer and let's say you had Photoshop open, well, your plugins aren't going to necessarily install in the right place because you were using Photoshop. Got solutions for all sorts of issues there. If you have any questions, you can always contact us at webinars at topazlabs.com. You can sign up for upcoming webinars at topazlabs.com forward slash webinars. And thanks again for taking time to come out and present with us. I know it takes a lot of time to put a presentation like this together. Um, we had a ton of people watching. I'm sure they all really enjoyed it. Uh, according to Celeste, we got a lot of really great feedback. Guys, I know we went through a lot really fast. Don't worry. Uh, if you miss something, you want to go back and review it, I'll have a follow-up email out to you in about an hour uh, that has a link to the recording so you'll be able to watch the whole webinar again at your leisure. And uh, Greg, again, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for coming out. And, uh, oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Heath. Cool. And we will uh, we'll look forward to seeing all you guys in the future. If you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. So uh, thanks for coming, and we'll hope to see you on a future webinar. Yeah. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.